welcome to today's video. Today I am going to be showing you all of my DIY holiday tips and tricks. To do this video I have partnered with Grey Goose and we are going to show you how to make the best of this at home holiday season. Okay, so we're gonna have some fun and here's what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how to wrap the perfect Christmas gift. I'm gonna show you my favorite holiday baking recipe. We're gonna talk about one of my favorite holiday cocktails, which of course has eggnog in it, and maybe a little bit of Grey Goose. And then I'm gonna to put together a cookie bar and I'm gonna show you what the tablescape looks like. So we can't talk about Christmas without talking about holiday baking. And I wanna show you how to make one of my favorite, absolute favorite shortbread recipes. This recipe is really simple and you can modify it to suit your needs. So I'm going to add pistachios and cranberries for a little bit of a festive flair, but you could add macadamia nuts, you could add hazelnuts, you could spruce it up with another dried fruit if you wanted, or you could make this shortbread recipe just plain, because let me tell you, it is so delicious on its own. To start off, you're gonna need one cup of butter. So I'm gonna take my cup of butter at room temperature and just add this to the bowl. Then I'm going to mix it with the mixer just so that I know that the butter is nice and soft. So next up, I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla, my secret weapon with these shortbread cookies, you guys know I like to improvise, is about a quarter teaspoon of almond extract. That just gives it a little bit more flavor that is oh so delicious. And then I'm gonna add about half a cup of icing sugar. You're gonna really smell the almond because it is very, very fragrant. Oh, it smells so good. So next up, I'm gonna add a quarter cup of cornstarch and a cup and a half of flour. Okay, great. Cookie dough looks awesome, smells amazing. I don't know about you, but I really love mm, raw cookie dough. Mm, so good, lots of butter in there. So next up, and the last step, I'm gonna add pistachios and cranberries. So I've got a few pistachios here. There's about half a cup. Along with about half a cup of cranberries. So I'm just gonna take a handful of the cranberries and throw these on the board. So what I'm doing here is I'm just giving the cranberries and pistachios a rough chop. The pieces individually are gonna be a little bit too big for the cookies. So I just wanna give them a nice rough chop to break up all the cranberries and pistachios. This is looking pretty good. So this cookie dough is looking amazing smells so good. I love the addition of the cranberries and pistachios because it just gives it a little bit of a festive touch with the red and green. Now this cookie dough is nice and crumbly, but very, very soft, which is exactly what you want. So I'm just gonna dump this out onto my kitchen island. There's a little bit of flour on here, which is totally fine. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna just divide this cookie dough in about half. And then here is the trick. This is an important part. So I'm gonna roll this cookie dough out. And basically what I'm gonna do is form two logs. And what I'm trying to do is roll it out into a log that is basically the size of the cookie that I want. So here we go, just a really easy roll. You don't wanna add any more flour or anything like that to your surface because the beauty of shortbread is that they are really buttery. And if you add too much flour, you lose the texture and the flakiness. Okay, these are nicely rolled out. They're way too soft to bake right now. So what I like to do is wrap them individually in saran wrap. Roll this out. And then these are gonna sit in the fridge for at least two hours. But personally, I like to do this overnight because when the shortbread dough sits in the fridge with the cranberry and the pistachio, just sort of absorbs all of that flavor overnight and tastes so much better when you bake them the next day. So I have my cookies sitting in the fridge and I have some cookie dough 
left over from last night. So you can see here, this is nice and hard because it's been sitting in the fridge for over 24 hours. Now, this is the reason you want to roll them out to the size of a cookie because now that the cookie dough is nice and hard, it's really easy to go in with a nice sharp blade and just slice the cookies to the thickness that you want. Now that you have all of your cookies that have all been sliced, shaped to the size that you want, I'm just gonna lay these all out on a tray. Keep in mind that they will spread a little bit when they're baking, so you wanna give them a lot of room. And then these are gonna go into the oven for about 10 minutes at 350 degrees. You're just gonna watch for these to brown ever so slightly. started with gift wrapping. Now I've got a few things on my kitchen counter. I've got some gift wrap, some craft paper, some white paper, some silver, a whole bunch of ribbon. I actually have a stick of cotton and then I've got a couple of boxes. So let's go ahead and get started with this. I think what I'm gonna do is use the craft paper for this particular gift. A tip for you is that if you are prone to cutting the paper too short, which I know a lot of people are, what you wanna do is place your box inside the paper and then pull the paper across so that it fully covers the box. That way you know you have enough paper to wrap the entire box. And then what I like to do is actually use the roll as a guide. Now that the length of the paper is the right size, you also want to make sure that the ends of the paper are also the right size. I'm gonna move this box over to one side, right up until the paper covers over half of the side of the box. So right about here. On the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. Fold this up. It doesn't overlap the ends, which is perfect. So I'm just gonna fold this over so I've got a clean edge, like this. I'm gonna add a piece of tape to the bottom. What I like to do is go ahead and then just run my fingers along the corner of the box, like that. Now, to get the perfect fold, what you wanna do is fold the paper down and go right across to the other side, you've got a perfect 45 that again, you're just gonna fold with your fingers. You're gonna do that on the same side. Once you fold these in, same thing. You wanna make sure that the sides of your box are nice and clean and stay nice and clean. And then what should happen is that right on the bottom, if you go all the way down, you're folding this on a perfect 45. I like to fold the end of the paper in, just like this. So you've got a nice clean fold. And then once you fold this up, you know that the end of the box is perfectly covered. Okay, so I'm gonna add some tape here. Okay, so now for ribbons and decor. I'm gonna go with a slightly thinner ribbon. So in this case, I've got some silver yarn, which I think is gonna be great. And I've also got these iridescent stars. It's a little bit of a wire. So I'm gonna mix these two. I like to measure this before I cut it. And the way that I do that is that I'll take the yarn or the ribbon, place it on top of the box, flip this over and do a little cross like this. And that will be an indication whether I have enough yarn or ribbon on one side to create the bow that I want. So I'm just ad-libbing this. I don't really have a plan. So this is a little bit of improvisation here. And as I'm tying the yarn on this particular gift, I feel like this would be really pretty with a double string. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing once again. Now, I think this is really cute and adorable. I think this is just gonna add another layer. So I'm basically gonna follow exactly what I did with the silver yarn. Okay, so last but not least, I'm gonna take my cotton. What I'm gonna do is cut this off 
right at the end of where there's three pieces of cotton. So this looks like one branch and then I'm going to trim the end and I'm going to trim it on a nice diagonal. <laughs> so this is a nice length because it's not overlapping the box and then I'm just going to tuck this in behind my bow. Last but not least, let's add a tag. I always love it when there's a little note. And there we go, we have a beautifully wrapped holiday gift. So now that the cocktails are poured, the gifts are wrapped, the cookies are baked, this is all about making the most of this holiday season. And in order to do that, I'm gonna be hosting a cookie bar for my very closest, which is my husband Chris, my mom, and my little sister. So in keeping with the gift wrapping and the holiday baking, I'm gonna put together a tablescape that is really effortless. And again, I'm just going to kind of ad lib this. For any tablescape, I always really like to start with a beautiful centerpiece and build my tablescape around that. In this case, I have some gorgeous dried flowers with beautiful whites, cream tones, I have a silver placemat underneath, and this is going to be a beautiful focal point in the center of the table. Next, I'm going to pull in some decor pieces and build up structure, play with different heights all around this centerpiece. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking some decor items. I've got these really fun trees that are made with white feathers. They add a little whimsical character to this tablescape. Over here, I've got some decor pieces that are also trees, a glass white and a clear glass, and then this really great crystal that's in the shape of a tree. So I'm just building up the table really loosely with different heights and playing with different decor items that feel really festive but that are also modern and not too traditional holiday. So I have this modern garland piece all attached as one and I'm gonna use this as a centerpiece. All I'm gonna do is just really casually throw this on the table, kind of weave this around some of these taller, bigger items. Now I've got this gorgeous silver three-tiered cookie tray which I'm going to tuck just in the back here. I love how this is coming together because I've got all these colors of white and silver and neutrals. It looks festive but it's so modern and this is of course gonna be filled with a whole bunch of delicious cookies. I'm so excited that I get to pull out my silverware. These two candle holders are a gift that my aunt had given Chris and I for our wedding. Uh, this is real German silver and I have actually never pulled these out for a special occasion. But because we're making the most of this holiday season, this is the perfect opportunity to use the silverware. So I'm gonna just place these on either side of the table, and this is just gonna be a beautiful accent on this effortless tablescape. So I've got everything loosely placed on the table. I've added some candles, I have some tea lights, I have my favorite candles from my aunt. I also have a serving spoon that uh, is part of this silverware set, so very near and dear to me as well. I have some serving plates, some really adorable napkins, and of course, some glassware for cocktails for my family who's gonna come by. As you can see, I've got a nice tray here with the cranberry and pistachio shortbread cookies. I also have this elevated tray with chocolate mint crackle cookies. And then I'm gonna build this three-tiered cookie tray with some of the other cookies that I made. Some of them being these chocolate squares. And I have butter horns, which I'm gonna set on the top and bottom tray. So 
So my cookie bar is all set, it's 100% done, and I could not be happier with the way that this turned out. This is beautiful, it has a hint of tradition to it, but it also feels incredibly modern, which I love. I also really, really love the incorporation of all the silver, gray, and white tones, which hasn't been used very often, but I feel like it's really fresh and super modern. A tip for you whenever you're doing any kind of tablescape is to just have have fun with it. Don't overthink it. Feel free to place things wherever it feels good and it'll turn out great. If you're interested in some of this holiday decor or the recipes for these cookies, definitely check out my blog at houseofbond.com. You can find all the information there. And if you want this amazing recipe for a Grey Goose and Eggnog cocktail, head over to the Grey Goose YouTube channel where you can find out how to make that cocktail over there. Okay everyone, that's it for today's video. I really hope you liked my holiday DIY tips and tricks. I'd love to hear from you, so comment below what was your favorite DIY tip and trick of the day. Was it making a Grey Goose and Eggnog cocktail? Was it putting together a beautiful, effortless tablescape for a cookie bar? Was it actually making the cookies? Or maybe it was how to wrap the perfect Christmas gift. Make sure you comment below, let me know because I'd love to hear from you and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already, so hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching, happy holidays, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. House and Home named me Influencer of the Year. Look at this. How flippin' cool. My gosh, thank you so much.